Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the Siri Full Armor Set from the Monster Hunter World Witcher Collaboration. If you're looking to unlock this set yourself, you'll need to defeat the Ancient Leshen first. He's a pretty tough multiplayer fight, so you should consider joining my Discord server and finding some skilled players to join up with you. You can find a link to the Discord in the description of all my videos, and we're almost at 6,000 members. I want to help you guys. Moving on to the review, you know, it always feels like I spend too much time talking about the defense of the armor set. It's my least favorite part of the video, so let's try to speed things up a little bit. This is a rarity 8 defense piece of armor, and it has negative 10 fire resistance, which is going to be bad for you. It does also come with a positive 10 thunder resistance, which helps with Kirin and with the behemoth, but really that's nowhere near as important as the fire defense. That's because almost all of the really dangerous monsters, they deal fire damage. So we're going to give the series set a C in defense because fire resistance is super important. Maybe it won't be when we get Iceborne, but it is right now. It is also going to give you 15 dragon resistance, but this is really only helpful in a few fights, including the Devil Joe fight and the Arch-Tempered Zenijiva fight. Next, I'm going to give the set an S in the set bonus skill rating. That's because it does come with the razor sharp spare shot skill. Now, I know it's technically a skill that we're getting on the arms, that's how they show it, but you will be using this skill either way because this is a full armor set. If you wear one piece of armor, you're wearing the whole set. So to be fair, we'll subtract that skill from the arms when we go over to the arms to rate them. All right, and now we'll just dive into breaking each individual piece of armor down. Remember as a full armor set that we care mostly about the final score at the end, but going piece by piece also helps us understand how we got there. Starting with the series head, I'm actually going to pretend that evade window is not on the build because I honestly think Evade Window is a kind of poor choice in defense for the defense skill meta. The, the primary reason being it's too expensive. That means I'm looking instead at the one level of free element, one large decoration slot, and two small decoration slots that are also on the helmet. If you just look at those, this is actually a terrific helmet because free element slash ammo up pairs nicely with the spare shot skill for bow guns, and that means it goes right into the S tier for having the same efficiency as the Nergigante Beta Helmet and the Dragon King Eye Patch. In fact, if you also count the Evade Window, is actually more efficient than both of those helmets. Next, we have Ciri's Body. Doesn't that seem kind of like an odd name for this piece of armor? I just feel inappropriate saying. Anyways, once again, we're getting the Evade Window skill. So I'm going to pretend it's not there. We're also getting two levels of Divine Blessing, and that I am going to count. The problem is that I typically don't build Divine Blessing unless I have room left over from building Health Boost. And then we're also getting a large decoration slot. That, that at least is nice. So this is a defensive chest piece and one of the more efficient ones in the game if you're counting Evade Window. The problem, again, it mostly lies in whether or not you believe Evade Window is valuable. If those two levels of Evade Window had been two empty decoration slots, I could see myself giving it an S tier rating, but it's really apparent that Capcom is trying to get us to use an underused skill in this case by giving it to us in high dosages. Evade Window itself is not bad, but no one wants to use it because it costs five medium decoration slots. It's just too expensive, and we have a Rock Steady and Temporal Mantle in the game, and even speedrunners tend to use the Evasion Mantle. Ciri's body is getting a C tier rating, not because of build efficiency, but because of the low priority default skills evade window and protection. After that, we move on to Ciri's arms. Between spare shot, free element, and the empty medium decoration slot, I think we can easily say this is one of the best van braces in the game for bowgun users, and that it probably deserves an S plus tier rating. Really, really good. However, since we already gave the whole set a nice S tier set bonus skill rating by counting the spare shot skill, we're going to mentally subtract it from our rating for the arms, and this is just to be fair, and give the arms a B tier rating instead. Trust me, I did this armor set a favor by giving it an S tier rating in the set bonus skill category, rather than a D, which is what it would have gotten if I simply treated it as if it had no set bonus skill, which isn't true. Uh, you know, the only way to get spare shot 
is if you happen to have a, a Styx weapon or if you built the Zanajiva armor. So I think it is fair to count it as a set bonus scope. All right, so once again, it's getting a B tier rating, which is an adjusted score. And now we have to look at Ceres Torso and try not to be caught looking at it. The Torso comes with one level of free element slash ammo up, two levels of Evade Extender, which I actually do consider using on defensive heavy Bogan builds, and one medium decoration slots. This is easily S tier efficiency for a coil, and all of the skills are relevant as well, although the Evade Extender is going to be kind of niche. What's interesting is also that Evade Extender is being paired with Evade Window, so you're being given a way to roll an extra far distance and with extra iframes as well. But is there a cost to all of this? Yes, the armor set so far is not giving us enough empty decoration slots to have a lot of build variety for optimized damage setups. Despite this, I'm giving the torso an A tier rating for being a strong evade extender option, as well as a really strong option for heavy bowguns looking to build both ammo up and evade extender. It would be S tier, but Evade Extender is not a necessary skill. You can make certain arguments for it. I think that Evade Extender really helps out most builds for fighting the Behemoth, right? The Behemoth Meteor, if you can just get away from the Meteor, you have a much better time. Finally, we have the piece of armor in the set that I like the least, Series Legs Alpha. In this case, we're getting the last two levels of Evade Window and two levels of Constitution that we don't really need, a medium decoration slot and a small decoration slot. So here's the deal, even on a bow build, we could have just used the Constitution charm in the charm slot and been fine on Constitution, but these legs force you to have the skill on any build you add to this set. In fact, if only those constitution levels had been two empty decoration slots, I think the Siri full armor set would have really been something special for many setups. But because you have to take constitution, you end up with just too few decoration slots needed to pull off a typical affinity critical damage build with most of the meta weapons. We'll get into that more later. As an individual piece of armor, these legs do deserve a good tier rating thanks to the overall efficiency and the importance of the constitution skill. However, I still question if a bow user would have actually used these over just taking the constitution charm. I think it would have been tempting at least, since the two levels of evade window might have actually been nice for casual bow runs. However, since I'm not convinced this is an S tier piece of armor, we'll go ahead and place it into the A plus tier. All right, let's go ahead and tally up the final score. We gave the set a C for defense because it actually has negative fire defense, which is always a no-no. It does have positive 10 uh, thunder, which is nice for Kieran and it's nice for the behemoth's thunderbolt attack. And then you guys probably wondered why I didn't get a better grade uh, because of the dragon resistance. Here's the problem. is sometimes useful against Devil Joe when he uses his Fire Breath, and then you would think for Arch Temper Zanishiva, it's going to be really good, right? But with Arch Temper Zanishiva, you're going to always be dealing with that hot floor problem. The Heat Guard from the Cold Taroth Gamma Legs is so valuable, but you can't build it on the series set, so your Fire Defense actually matters. It would have been nice to be able to bring that Fire Defense over 20, and you just are really not going to be able to do that in a, in a nice way. After the defense, which we basically just re-reviewed, uh, you get S for the set bonus skills, spare shot, remember, S for the helmet, C for the chest, B for the arms, which we had already subtracted spare shot from, A for the evade extender waist, a niche but desirable waist for heavy bow guns, and finally, we gave the legs an A plus tier rating because for bows, it's actually a pair of legs worth considering. The final score for the Siri full set comes out to be an A tier rating I think it's a fair rating for this armor set. It's really an unusual full set that gives you the evade extender and evade window skills very efficiently. These aren't necessary, but when you can get them both is actually kind of nice. When I ran some builds using the Siri full armor set, I definitely felt a lot more evasive and because of my heavy playtime in the game, I could really recognize myself dodging attacks that should have landed on me, so it's not bad. However, Building for this set can be really tricky and limiting for optimized setups. This is mainly because of the mismatched skills also found on the set, like Free Element, which kills Elementless builds or is otherwise redundant for most weapons, as well as Constitution and Evade Window that are taking up slots that could have gone to other skills. You end up with not enough slots to finish these three skill sets. Weakness Exploit, 
Max Might, and Critical Boost. Those are the three skills that really dominate uh, most of the builds in Monster Hunter World. Because of this, you have to target weapons that require fewer slots to optimize their damage or have some other kind of natural build efficiency. Let's move on to showing you some examples of highly optimized Siri armor set builds. Starting us out, here's a defensive sticky ammo level 3 build on the Dark Devourer Heavy Bowgun. I actually think this is a true upgrade from my old defensive sticky build on Dark Devourer, as long as I eat for fire resistance and wear the fireproof mantle in the case that I'm fighting a fire damage monster. The reason this is working out so well is because all I really need is Slugger and Artillery 3 for damage. The free element skill already comes with the set, and so does Spare Shot. Then we're also getting Evade Window and Evade Extender, and as you might already know, Evade Extender works really, really well on heavy bow guns. So in a way, Capcom just made one of the cheesiest defensive setups in the game slightly better by giving it maxed Evade Window. Next, I was also surprised to learn that the Terrath Lightning Bow can pair with the series set as well. This time the built-in free element is unlocking the thunder damage, we're getting those two levels of constitution, and we actually have a lot of level 3 decoration slots to take care of normal and spread decorations. The only problem is that you're trading critical element off with, I suppose, the combination of evade extender and evade window, so it's really a defensive versus offensive kind of situation. You're, you're trading off some of your damage, but you're getting five ranks of evade window. Considering how much damage bows already do, you might be fine and really just prefer the defense, but obviously speedrunners won't be interested in doing this. I'm also disappointed in the reality that the Kiara bows can be used with the Siri armor set, but then those three levels of free element really aren't being put to use at all. And finally, here's a light bow gun build using one of the QR light bow guns that already comes with critical element. So what I'm doing here is I'm not worrying about a critical boost build because I'm getting free critical element from a QR weapon. So now I have spare shot and critical element on the build, and all I have left to do is finish off as much affinity as I can. And of course, I also boost the elemental damage type of the ammo I'm working with. Is this ideal for damage? In some cases, pretty much. However, not for fighting Kolv Terroth, because you won't be able to add Bombardier and Partbreaker onto the build without sacrificing a lot of damage somewhere else. So that was a bit of disappointment to realize, because Kolv Terroth is super relevant and one of the monsters you have to grind the most, and as you know, the lightning ammo just tears her up. But yeah, it's just the way it is. We're, we're just going to have to think of it as a elemental ammo bowgun build for regular monsters. Okay. So I showed you three builds that will make pretty much the most out of the Siri armor set. A heavy bowgun build using artillery, a bow build that needs free element, and a light bowgun build that doesn't need to build critical boost because it comes with critical element and uses elemental ammo. If you can think of any other types of builds that have a very high synergy with the Siri full armor set, be sure to share it with us in the comment section. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.